Are you feeling angry with your ex and you don't know where to channel this rage you have inside of you? Are you remembering some of the things they did to you and feel angry with them and maybe also a bit embarrassed for what you have accepted? That is not always a bad thing. Let me explain why. First of all, anger is a very normal and necessary part of the healing process. I would almost be more concerned if someone said they are not angry. Then it means you are not yet on the healing journey. You are probably still idealizing your ex. You're probably still putting them on a pedestal and you have still a long way to go. But if you are angry instead, then, then it probably means you have recognized the mistakes your ex has made. You have recognized their flaws. You are more aware about their misbehaviors. This could be things, for instance, lack of loyalty, as an example. It could be cheating or emotional cheating that happened during the relationship. These are all things that can be a trigger for your anger, but also maybe not misbehaviors, but also simply the fact that they did not try as hard as you did. Maybe they were not as flexible as you were during the relationship. So when you're angry, you're angry about these things as well. So being angry is good because it means you are recognizing all of this and you are starting to take your ex off the pedestal, which is really the first step you need to take in the healing journey. If, if you're idolizing your ex, if you're only looking at their qualities, if you're remembering all the good times and forgetting all of the bad things, yeah, good luck healing with that. So anger is a normal part of the process. It's a necessary part of the process. Once you've immediately broken up, usually the, the first reaction you will have is a reaction of shock and fear. You will feel overwhelming anxiety. Uh, you will start panicking. You'll start thinking about, you know, what you're missing out by not being with your partner anymore. So it's very normal that this is the first reaction when the breakup is communicated to you. But as you start accepting the breakup, maybe implementing, for instance, no contact, which is absolutely necessary, you start to become more rational and you start looking back at the relationship uh, as you emotionally detach and you start to realize a lot of the bad things that happened. You can almost push yourself uh, to reach this point in the process. And one of the things I've always advocated for is by writing a list, a list of all the bad things that have happened during the relationship, a list of all the bad qualities that your ex has exposed, a list of the egoism, the uh, uh, abuse that they might have uh, uh, pushed you to endure. So once you do that, then inevitably anger will start appearing. Um, another positive thing is that anger can be used actually very productively. It can help you reach the point where you say things uh, about your ex like uh, you know beep them or you know they uh, you can do better without them they were not good people these are all good things to say in the healing process because it will help you emotionally detach from them anger is also a unique source of energy that you can deploy in other aspects of your life for instance if you're doing sports if you're training if you're going to the gym many people after they break up they they find this innate strength that pushes them beyond borders that they have ever imagined uh, while they're running, for instance, or whatever other kind of activity they are doing, even hobbies like playing a, a musical instrument. Of course, the dangerous thing here is that if you're angry and you're sitting at home and wallowing in the anger, that, that is very dangerous, that is very unproductive and does not bring any good results. So you need to use this anger that you have for, for your ex. What's also fundamental here is that that anger needs to subside over time. It needs to decrease and it will uh, inevitably it decrease because uh, there's only so much you can do uh, before you start getting bored of being so angry. There's only so many push-ups you can do until you will eventually inevitably start moving on. But in the same way, like you put yourself in this voluntary angry state, like writing the list, you also need to pull yourself out of it. So you need to decide 
not to use that list anymore. Uh, you know, you've rationalized this relationship enough. You've reached the conclusion that your partner is not a good person. They're not right for you. Well, you don't need to overdo this every single time you have a feeling of anger. You don't need to go back to the list. So there's also steps that you can take to detach from that anger. Because what really matters the most is actually, what, what not what matters the most, but what is your objective is not to stay in this anger phase, but is actually to reach the indifference stage, which is the best place you can be. When you are indifferent to someone, then you've kind of won the breakup. So another important thing to say here is that you should not stress about being in the anger phase for very long. It's normal when you have given so much to someone, you know, if you've been in a relationship for five years, for instance, and they left you on a moment's notice, that it's going to take a lot of time to be able to get over that betrayal. If they cheated on you, for instance, and you were married, or even if you were not married, I would argue, and you're very angry with them, you, you can kind of understand that it's not going to be enough to uh, be uh, detached for a week until you become indifferent, you know. So, so also be a bit patient with yourself, be patient with your emotions, understand that it takes time. But inevitably, day by day, if you look back at once you were broken up in maybe the first month, now it might be month six, it might be one year, you're inevitably going to feel less angry. So let time give its natural course and really focus on the things that you have actual control over.